Hey everybody, hope you are studying well for your exam. In this revision series, we have progressed to the topic of text file. So let's revise it. According to the syllabus, we must know three types of file. Text file, binary file as well as CSV file. CSV file is a type of text file. But what is file? It stores data permanently in your disk. In this video, we are going through text file. Text file stores the data in the form of ASCII characters or we can say Unicode characters. It will be in the readable format. We can open the text file in any text editor like notepad. Make a note of it. Each line in a text file will be ending with the backslash n. It is called as end of line character. Whenever we talk about the file, here are the basic operations that we will be performing on it. The first two operation that is opening the file and closing the file is must. Apart from that we can write data to the file, we can read data as well as we can append data to the file. From exam point of view, we will be concentrating more on reading data from the file because generally you get 3 marks question on the text file where you need to read the file. So let's check out how to open the file. We are opening the file means we are creating the file for different purpose. For that we need to use open function. The first parameter is file name that we are going to give to the file. And the second parameter is the mode which decides for what purpose you are creating that file. For reading, writing or to append the data to the file. Default mode is read mode. So here is a list of the different modes available for the text file. Out of these six we will be concentrating more on these three modes. For reading the file, R mode we will be used. To write data to the file, we will be using W mode. And to append the data to the file, we will be using A mode. Now here is the operation of closing the file. Why we close the file? Because there will be connection established between the disk on your computer and the program. That we need to break to keep your data secure. For that we will be using close function. It doesn't take any parameter. It works with the file object which will get created with the open function. Alright, file got created. Now we need to write data to the file. For that there are two options. The first is write function and the second one is write lines. Write function write a single string to the file whereas write lines write a list of the strings. We will not concentrate more on writing data to the file because you will not get question on it. You will be getting question on reading the text file. All the file functions will be working on the file handle or we can say file object. So here is the syntax of write function. Let's check out this code where we are writing one name to the file. The first step is to open the file. Here we are writing the data that's why we are using W mode and this is the name of the file. If we are using text file, we will be writing the extension as .txt. Write function takes string, so we are providing it. It works with the file object, so here is the name of the file object which we have created with the open function. Always the final step will be closing the file. Alright, come to VS Code. We have written one simplest program of writing one name to the file. Here is the first step of opening the file, the second step is to write and the third step is to close the file. Execute the program. If you are using VS code for python practice, you can see file here itself. Otherwise, you can go to the folder where you are working and open it in a notepad. Let me execute this program and show you the output of the file. Here it is, we have written one name to the file. Our file got created. In this way, we got an idea how to write data to the file, but file is used to store large amount of data, not one name. In that case, you will be using looping. In this code, we are taking name of the student and writing it one by one using write method. Alright then, here is the code. Let me demonstrate you. Using range function, we are taking name of the student and writing it to the file. We are working on the same file. If you will open the same file in the W mode, previous data will get erased. Generally, we don't do this, but we are just practicing. Let me execute this program. We have written range of 3. It means this loop will execute from 0 to 2. It means we will be entering the name of 3 students. Let's write some random name. Program got executed. Now let's check the content of the data file. You will be thinking this is not in the readable format. There is no space in between. But if you need to write something to the file, you need to use write method of the file. Let's concatenate space here itself. 
If you want the names in the new line, write backslash n. It is a new line character. Once again, let's execute this program. Here are the name of the students. Look at the file content. Now we got the space in between. In the same way, you can write backslash n for new line. Hope you understood the usage of write method. But what's the problem? It takes only one string. But what if you want to write a whole line? In that case, you will be using write lines function. It takes a list of strings. Look at the output. Here is a list of strings. If you will write, you will get the data in this format. Again, if you want space or backslash n, that you need to write explicitly. You know, writing lines one by one will not be practical. In that case, again, we will be using loop. But write lines take a list of strings. In that case, we will be using append function of list. So in the beginning, list will be empty. We will enter the name of the student, appending that name to the list. We are well familiar with the usage of backslash n. In this way, we will get one list of string that we will provide to the write lines method. It will write data to the file. So the first job to create a list of string, then pass it on to the write lines function. Let's work out with the write lines function. Here is a list of string. So let's execute and check the content of the file. Look at the file data. We could write a line. Even longer line you can write. All right, now we are moving ahead to the important topic, how to read data from the file. Once we have written data to the file, we are not opening the file and checking the data. We will be writing program for reading the file. For that, we have three different options. The first is read function. It reads the whole file, but in the form of string. Using read line function, we can read a single line. That too in the form of string. But read lines function reads the whole file in the form of list. Please make a note of it. Alright, let's go through all this function. The first is read. Look at the syntax. Here is one optional parameter n. It is number of bytes. Number of bytes are nothing but number of characters. If you want to read specified number of characters, you can provide it there. Look at the example. We have written 3 means only 3 characters will get read. For reading, we will be opening the file in the R mode. Read function will extract the data from the file. That's why we will be storing it in a variable and then we will printing it. This parameter is optional. If we don't provide, what will happen? In that case, whole content of the file will get read. The content will be in the form of string. Alright, we have some data in the file. Let's read some of the characters from the file. For that, we have opened the same file in the R mode, reading the data, only three characters and printing it. Let's execute this program. Look at the output. We got only three characters. If you don't provide it, whole file will get read. Look at the output. This is the file content. Whole content got read. Here is the next function to read data. That is read line. It will read one line from the file. Look at the syntax. It doesn't take any parameter. Let's add some more lines to the file so that the output will be clear. So here is the code to read a line from the file. Let's execute. Here is the output. One line got read. If you want to read one more line, you can write one more read line function. Let me show you. Alright, in this code we are using read line function. With that we could read one line that we are printing. Again, we have used read line function. With that, we will be reading second line, printing it. Now, look at the output. You got two lines, but here is one empty line we could see. Why this is so? Let's try to understand. When read line function reads whole line, it will end it with backslash n. Backslash n is nothing but a new line character. That's why we are getting one empty line after reading each line. So this problem we need to rectify. For that we will be using n parameter and we will suppress that backslash n. So here is the empty string. We are not giving any space in between. Let me demonstrate. Here we are using n parameter and suppressing that new line character. Now look at the output. That new line got suppressed. So we need to do this small arrangement for the perfect output. We know that there will be thousands of lines in the file. 
in that case we are not going to write thousand read line functions for that we will enclose that read line in a loop so this is one way of writing loop but this is quite complicated for that we will be writing this loop look at this code even without using read line function we are reading the whole content of the file how this is so with open function we are creating one file object file object will point to the file and it will go through the content of the file line by line it means ultimately the task of reading the line will be done by the pointer so if we iterate over the pointer also we are getting one line that's why without using read line function also we can read whole content of the file hope this is clear to you then let's move ahead here is the third function for reading the content of the file it reads all the lines but in the form of list of strings look at the output this type of output you will be getting if you will print whole content of the file using write lines function in case of list this backslash n will not get interpreted as a new line that's why it will print as a character at the end of every element of the list read line function also doesn't take any parameter all right here is the code let's check out the output here is the output this is a single line which got read followed by backslash n and this is the second line look at the file content first line and second line we already understood that in case of text file every line will get end with backslash n it is the end of line character in case of text file in case of read line function backslash n will get interpreted as a new line so we got one empty line but in case of read lines function you can see the character here itself in this way we understood all three functions there is one more operation that is appending data to the file already file is created with some data if you want to add some more data to the file then we will be appending data to the file for that we will be doing the process of write only there is only one change we need to keep in mind mode will be a not w if you open the same file in the w mode the data will get erased that's why we don't open already existing file in the w mode we should open that file in a mode to append data to the existing file otherwise the code will be same of writing data to the file so it's time to wrap up this video hope you got an idea of text file in the next video we will be solving questions based on the text file so until next time stay positive stay confident i will see you in the next video